Thank you, Lars Kankora, and thank you, Minister, for coming in to have this very important discussion and debate. Minister, if I can begin by just picking out one sentence in your opening statement, and that is on the second page where you say, I know there was no malice intended on the part of the department. And I have to say, Minister, I fundamentally disagree with that particular line. Because all of us who are working in our constituency office, and I include you in all of this because you are absolutely blameless in all of this, all of us in our constituency offices know that the parents that come through our door who are looking for some kind of support, very basic support and assistance for their child, whether it be educational, health or any of those basic, basic needs, come in to us exasperated. And they're coming to us because they have tried to do it on their own. And they have tried to rail against the system, to put these very, very basic, to give their children who have no voice a voice, to give their children who, are, who appear to be faceless within the system a face. And in the previous stall, I brought your predecessor, Minister Finian McGrath, down to see the Holy Family School, which does a huge service for children with disabilities, intellectual and physical, catering for children primary and secondary um, right across Cabin And it's one of the most inspiring, exhilarating places you can go between the teachers, the parents, the SNAs, the medical staff in that school for what they do. And they are totally reliant on that community of people to look after them. And when you talk with the parents, none of them, none of them, will tell you it's been easy. None of them will tell you that they have felt the state was in their corner. And I don't really like using the word state because that really, to me, lets people off the hook. It lets the officials that were responsible for this sneaky, conceited manner of eliciting information from GPs. I mean, none of us in our constituency office would ever make a uh, consultation with a department without having the authority of our constituent. And what happened here with these officials is just absolutely disgraceful. And I will have to also remark on what um, Deputy Creed remarked on earlier on. The idea that an official would get on to our national broadcaster of RTE and try and gag them for exposing something so, so important. And let's be honest, Minister, we've known this was happened. We've known that people and parents have always felt that the state has railed against them. But this idea that in terms of litigation, the sneaky, conceited way that the information was being elicited is absolutely unforgivable. And I'm going to finish on this, Minister. I really do hope, because I know you've done tremendous work in the very short time you've been there. Tremendous work. But I want to know, and the parents want to know, that this will stop, because it is a cultural thing. It is this idea that we're bigger and more powerful than the law and the country itself, that we will put these people in their box and we will take them on. What chance do people have? But the people, what I want to know, Minister, is that after Mr. Corr's brave, brave, courageous stance, that there will be people made accountable, not the state, people, that officials will be brought in and made accountable for what they did here.